Okay, so let's look on another very powerful um, option inside the Turgeon 3. It is populations. So you can take different objects, plants, rocks, and automatically, mathematically distribute them in specific areas. So it saves you a lot of time when you want to create a huge, large forest areas, or just maybe on riverbanks forever, is you give it more natural looks. So you can do this by um, creating populations. So let's do this way by open library. And inside the library, I'm going to select a plant and use it as import population. So let's take a second. You'll notice right here in object, we have it now the object that we're using for populations and we also have it our population systems. If we click on this, we have it properties for the distribution and population. So let's look closer. Right here, first, we have a distributions where we have an area center, rotation, link, and all the stuff. So first, what I'm going to do before modify, I want preview. So I click populate now. You can see we have all this instance. Now, if I want to take this and create maybe only 100 meters by 100 meters area, okay? And let's click populate. So you can see how it shrink. Next, I want to move this little up front of the camera. So on a Z, I set 50. And right here, our area where we're currently populating. So we have our center, our rotations, if we need to do. We have a link, area link. Notice also this is population. It's a link to my terrain. I can link this population to any other objects. For example, if I create a plane, I can just link this to the card, disk, or to any other area. But currently, it's just using my terrain right here, fractal terrain, as a parent for the population. So next, we have it also object spacing. Currently, you can see how much between each object. So we can reduce this or minimize or maximize. So let's go ahead, set, for example, 5 and 5. Well, you notice we have it more objects because it's populating between each data. Spacing variations, so it's randomly, we can adjust. If we want, say, uh, three, it's maybe will be anywhere from zero to three. So it's kind of increasing, create a little bit more randomness in this effect. We can also use a density shader to populate specifically. Remember, the shader even can be image map, so I can create a river bank and another program imported and using that shader to populate in specific areas. So on the next also I can use my painting so I can create a painting, paint where I want to populate, save as a shader and use a, this shader for my populations where I want to populate. So you can use the painting tool to actually painting the distribution of the um, populations. So next, we have it also option, just overall global right here, populate every flame, clip to the camera, so it won't be populating outside the camera area. Use instance cache, so if we have it pre-cached somewhere, it will be a little bit faster, but it'll take a little bit memory, so it's global. But right here, more important, what we have it on pre-settings. So right now, we have a distribution. So let's go look on the terrain. Currently, we have it seat to the terrain, and we assign compute to the terrain. If you want to use a different, we can up assign to different planet or a different object or a different type of the terrain. As well, if we don't enable C to terrain, we can apply it, can flow in the air. So in some cases, you can maybe create a floating trees, floating snowflakes, if you like it. Scale, currently it's scale one, you notice. So if I want it, I can create a minimum 0 0.5 and maximum maybe two. Let's say populate. And you can see now I change scale a little bit more on my plants. Again, this is maybe more dramatic change of the scale, but you do want maybe apply just a little bit, like maybe 0 0.9, 1.1. .1. So it just slightly change scale on those plants. The one thing, notice right here, I have a preview color. So what is meaning, if 
I um, have it more than one population, just overall till I remember, I can have it enabled so I can preview different instances where they're going. So if you have more than one population. So next, let's go to rotation. And same things, I can apply random rotation to specific or to minimize. Right now, they're rotating all over, 360 degrees. If you disable this one, let's go put all away. So they will all going straight. This is better work if you build the city or you build more mechanical things. So you can use those settings to illuminate rotations. They also, we don't want to go in a Y because if we do this, you'll notice some of the trees will kind of weirdly turn around. We don't need this. Lean out of terrain normals. Mostly we will have it right here normal. So we can have it plant just go straight out of them, not vertically. So you can apply and also work with the lean effect. In some cases, you want trees maybe slightly going on the side so you can enable and use it the lean effect and also um, on a slope if it's so much degrees or other ones. So you can apply those effects as well. Color, it will affect overall populations. For example, the all plants will look now exactly the same green. You can um, use a tin diffuse color, apply on specific shaders or use multipliers for this and change slightly color variations of the green so they look not so uniform, look slightly different and natural. The random seed, they can apply it. The other option, editing, so you can edit any um, object in your population. For this, let's go enable start editing. And you notice now I can select each individual east instance. I can move this instance, repositions, adjust, delete it, or restore it or scale. So it's any, I can even rotate, you know, do anything I wanted to this. Okay, let me just scale. Okay, also while I'll edit or other ones, I can enable highlight and show deleted. So on this case, when I stop editing, I notice that element was edited because it is highlighted for me. So I know which element I modified. This is very helpful when you get a lot of instance and you will just adjust a few of them and want to know which one you adjust. So right here, this is editing for a single instant menu. Okay, let's go populate. Okay, let me do one thing. What I want to do is random seed, click populate. Notice when I repopulate, my editing element still be here. However, it was just a little bit random reposition, but scale and size is still keeping same as from what time I was edit this. Next, I have it also render quality. Currently it's set to the medium quality. You can increase or decrease, depend on um, what result you want to go. And as well, you can uh, change uh, from box to shades or other expand. So right here you can see we can edit instance also directly from 3D. So you're not necessary if you like in atmosphere mode, you preview, you can still can go inside edit and edit specifically just the instance without going in editing mode. When we're done, we can go stop edit and right here a few of them applied. So this is very helpful when you work maybe with the um, object place castles and you notice some plants maybe growing on a castle through the castle wall so you want to remove them so anytime you can go select take an object move it away for example clean up a little bit more this area around here yeah, let's select this one I don't want this transform okay let me delete it Okay, notice the deleted is now red, so it's removed. Okay, let me go select. So you can see I can remove reposition, select specific areas. When I'm done, oops, let's go to stop editing. So I'm done editing and now all these populations, it's ready for me to use. So this is kind of nice tool for the massive populations and you can literally do the billions of the instance, populate with the plants, on the slope and we'll do this in a more kind of our creating made painting with a Terrigen 3. We'll do 
more of those populations use it quite a bit often. Thank you for watching this tutorial from Geek at Play Studio. And please remember, visit us on the web is www.geekatplay.com.